and welcome back to my channel my name's Rachel and this is Stitched Up so today's video is going to be a fabric haul and I've not done one of these for ages um, and I know those of you that follow me regularly will really think why on earth has she been buying more fabric but some of you will know that I went to Cornwall last week for a week's break and during that week I did manage to fit in a visit to Truro Fabrics. So I thought you'd like to see what I bought from Truro Fabrics. I did only buy two fabrics actually so I was very very restrained um, but I thought I'd share those with you today. However on top of that I've also got a few more fabrics to show you that I've been buying recently. Just before I went on holiday I did get a couple of fabrics from Sew Over It in their recent sale that you You've not seen yet and this week I've also been off work as well I start my new job on Monday which I'm really looking forward to and so this week I've had a few days as well where I've been catching up with friends and um, not had a chance to do much sewing yet but I did have a lovely day out to Harrogate a few days ago which is a gorgeous spa town in North Yorkshire it's only about three quarters of an hour away from where I live and uh, while we were there we did locate one of the lovely fabric shops in Harrogate called the Remnant House as well and I've got a couple of fabrics from there um, and then finally I had a meeting with my new manager in the morning and then I was meeting up with one of my old managers for lunch in sort of the same area but we had a gap of about an hour and a half and Fabworks in Dewsbury was only 15 minutes away from where I was so it would have been rude not to go and visit wouldn't it so I went to Fabworks as well and bought a few fabrics from there so I thought you'd like to see what I bought so let's get started so I will start with a couple of fabrics that I bought from Sew Over It just before I went to Cornwall and Sew Over It released a new PDF pattern last month called the Soraya jacket or Soraya jacket I'm not quite sure how you pronounce it which is a gorgeous little crop jacket which I will put a picture of up here for you to um to have a look at and i really really like that jacket and bought the pattern and needed some fabric obviously to make it and because we're coming into autumn i am finally now coming round to the idea of autumn and autumnal fabrics so this first fabric that i got from sew over it is with the soraya jacket in mind and it is a viscose twill in a beautiful beautiful burgundy colour I'm in love with this colour this year for autumn and winter I just I, I mean I'm a big fan of purple and purple hues anyway I know this isn't purple but it's you know it's on the sort of colour scheme isn't it and it's coming up very red more maroon on on screen but it is much more of a deep wine burgundy colour in real life and it's gorgeous I really love this so I'm going to plan to make the Soraya jacket out of this. Um, I'm hoping probably later this month, maybe leading into October, um, but it's definitely, definitely on my list. It's beautiful. It's a really lovely weight, very drapey, so it's going to be really nice for a relaxed jacket. So looking forward to making that. Um, this wasn't in the sale, but it was one of their recommended fabrics for the Soraya jacket. So I'm really pleased that I've got that one. And in the sale, I'd been eyeing up this fabric for a while. I think Lisa Comfort did a sew along for the Ultimate Shift dress over the summer. And this was one of the fabrics that I was going to buy at the time. But by the time I got round to trying to get a metre of it, they didn't have any left. And then I noticed just before I went on holiday that they had some more in. So I bought a metre of it. Um, and this is it here. It's this beautiful emerald green um, scalloped lace. It's more like a Jeepo lace and it's got a lovely hem to it there. Hopefully you can see that. Um, it's really pretty. I'll just bring it in close so you can have a look. There you go. Really, really pretty. Beautiful detail there. Um, it's more, yeah, it's like a jade green. It's beautiful. Um, this, obviously, it's getting too late in the year now for making lace tops but it's going to be a little lace top so yes last week i was in cornwall and we did manage a trip to truro fabrics i've got two fabrics to show you and this was the first one which is beautiful viscose again i think this is a viscose twill is it no it's just a viscose but it's gorgeous these gorgeous mustard colors are just so divine aren't they for autumn so i wanted to get three meters of this to make a lovely dress for autumn but they only had um, just under two meters left on the bolt so I bought what they had left and I am thinking there was a McCall's dress that I made last year out of the Mind the Maker leopard viscose twill fabric if I can find a picture I will put a picture in 
I can't remember which pattern it was, but I'll put the pattern number down below. And I think this would look lovely with boots um, and tights for winter. So that is the plan with this, but it's gorgeous. It's really lovely, really lovely print. I mean, I love floral fabrics anyway, and I love this print. Um, I love these colours. I think they work really well together. So um, this was 12 99 a metre. So as I say, um, they're certainly not in the Waltons category for pricing, but it's beautiful fabric and I'm really pleased that I got this. And then the other fabric that I got from Trero is one that you've probably seen before because there are lots of sellers that sell this fabric, but this is a Dashwood rayon fabric and it's lovely. I've been eyeing this up online for ages and with it now coming into autumn, I think this is obviously just the, the most gorgeous fabric. You can really tell the difference between this and the other viscose that I've just shown you, but this is really pretty. Um, it's obviously higher, a slightly higher quality. Um, gorgeous drape on it, as you can see there. And the print is really, really crisp and gorgeous. I love it. I've got three metres of this and this was 15 99 a metre. So again, it's not a cheap fabric. Um, and that's why I just decided to get the two from... Truro but I love this it's beautiful and I think this is obviously going to be another dress for autumn winter I haven't yet given it a lot of thought what I want to make this up into but I, that was the reason I bought three meters because then I thought I've got enough to make something quite nice for autumn and winter um it might be something i mean originally i was thinking maxi dress but i'll be honest i've made maxi dresses before to wear in winter and i tend not to wear them i know that you know the florence dress is the one that really comes springs to mind for me that is by so over it again i've made that in a maxi style for winter and i just don't wear it in winter so i don't think i am going to go for that kind of style out of this fabric and perhaps I could make something that's more tunic length that I can wear over tights or leggings and then I might have enough left to make a Gilbert top by Helen's Closet I'm really fancying making that pattern this autumn as well so um yeah I love this it's beautiful really really lovely fabric so that was my little haul from Truro now Many of you will know that I was planning to go to the KB sewing retreat on the Isle of Wight next month. I've been twice before and it's lovely. It's so nice. Um, made really good friends. And yeah, we were all going to get together again next month. It had already been postponed from May this year to October. And unfortunately, it's had to be postponed again purely because of new government restrictions that came out this week on numbers of people that can be together socially. So, yeah, that's really, really... Um, disappointing and frustrating um but you know that's the situation we're in at the minute so i was just in the middle of getting as i'm sure many of the other attendees were as well just in the middle of getting all my bits and pieces together because we were going to be making a bag we didn't get to the point where we knew what bag we were going to be making but i had purchased the fabric that i was going to be making for that bag so i thought i'd show you it because it's Hopefully we will still be able to get together next year, early next year, and be able to um, get this bag made at the retreat. So I thought I'd show you what I have bought. So um, I knew I already had some vinyl in my stash that would be, well, I've got a few different colours anyway that I'd already been getting together to make bags with. And I wanted to go for something that would contrast really well with the vinyl that I already had. So I had a quick look around and I fell in love with this fabric. And you probably understand why when you see it because it's gorgeous. Um, this is it here. So this is a tapestry fabric that I bought from Textile Express and I think it was about £15 a metre but I only needed half a metre um, of this to make the particular bag that Sean was planning for the retreat. So it's beautiful, it's got these gorgeous parrots or macaws or whatever, whatever they are. Um, if I bring it back you can see. I, I wanted something that fit my personality and fit my style which you know I love the tropical prints and this really fits in with that but I wanted something with a sort of geometric design I guess and um, particularly for a bag and I think this works really really well so it's beautiful it's really lovely I think it's going to be perfect weight for I mean you can see because that's the on the other side of it this is a, as I say it's a tapestry type fabric phrase like anything as you can see but it's going to be fabulous for the bag and um, so 
I had a quick root in my stash when this came. I didn't buy any vinyl because I thought I'm sure I've got some that's going to be perfect as the contrast for this. And I have, and this is it here. So this is a blue sort of vinyl. Um, I can't remember where I bought this from now, but it's been in my stash. And I think those colours are going to work really well together to make the bag when I do get a chance to go to the retreat. So they're just going to have to go and sit in my stash for now, patiently waiting while we next get the opportunity to get together. Right, moving forward, while we're talking about bags, I have absolutely fallen in love with the new Moonwake bag by Erica from Lavender and Twine. Now Erica is an amazing bag maker. She she has her own business and she was at the first retreat that I went to and that's where I met her and she's just such a lovely lovely lady. So I will link to her down below if you want to go and check her out but she is incredible at making bags. You know she's just her, her skills are just absolutely amazing. They really are. I mean, the bags that she makes look so professional, so well sewn. Um, and she started designing her own um, patterns for bags um, probably about a year ago, maybe about 12 to 18 months ago, something like that. And she's just released one recently called The Moonwake, which is right on my street. It's gorgeous. So I have, I'm going to attempt this. You know, I've bought the pattern. The pattern comes with video tutorials as well. I will link to it down below and I've had a quick look through the instructions and the, my first impressions are that this is going to be a great pattern and quite easy to follow. It looks quite complex, it looks a complex bag um, and I've only made two bags before and I've made a couple of NCWs but I'm going to attempt this and looking at the pattern the thing that really struck me with Erica straight away was on the, the, the front page of the pattern she's got little arrows to all the different hardware on the bag and what they are. Not just the hardware, but different components of the bag as well. So for instance, we all know as dressmakers, when you're making a dress, you know, you learn the terms of dressmaking and obviously with bags, the terms can be different. So I'm very much a um, visual learner and when I am putting something together, I need to be able to visualize it in my head about how, how it's coming together for me to be able to work with it and, and construct something. And with bag making, when people start talking about strap ends and strap connectors and things like this, I can't visualize in my head because I'm not experienced enough as to what they actually mean. And the beauty of Erica's pattern, the thing that struck, struck me straight away was she's got a picture of the bag on the front page of the pattern instructions with little arrows to what every part of the bag is and what they're called which I just thought that is just ingenious um, because immediately then you know when she's talking about it, making the different components and getting everything together as well about you know all the, the hardware you need and the notions and things you know exactly what you're looking for and how it fits into the into the construction of the of the bag does that make sense so yeah and I, I just know that that it's going to be a breeze well I'm saying that but um Hopefully my skills will take me there, but I just know that with Erica's instructions and her video tutorials, it's going to be amazing. So that little bit of waffle to one side, I have ordered some of the Mora um, faux leather that So Hot do, and I've got all my notions on the way from So Hot. Now that's not here yet, so I can't show you the um, the leather that I've chosen. Well, it's not leather, it's faux leather um, that I've chosen to make this bag with. Um, but I mentioned at the beginning of this vlog that I was in Harrogate, yes, not yesterday, the day before with my friend and we went to the Remnant House, which is a fabric shop that I've not been to before. I didn't do any filming inside, um, but I was looking for a lining fabric for this bag that's going to complement the faux leather that I have on its way from So Hot. Um, I will insert a picture of it. It's the tan version that I have ordered. And um, it was actually my friend that found this fabric. It's a, it's a Rose and Hubble fabric. And as soon as she picked it out, I said, that's going to be amazing. So this is it here. It's something I've never seen before. It's quite unusual. Um, but this is it. It's like Oriental fans. Um, no, Oriental umbrellas. That's the word I'm looking for. And they're so, so pretty. Um, I just think this is going to be the perfect lining. This is obviously 100% cotton. I think it was 5 99 a metre. I only got a metre because that's all I'm going to need for this bag. But I am itching to get started on this. As I say, I've ordered all the hardware 
and the Decaville, which is the sort of firm interlining that you use and I can't wait to get started so I'm really really looking forward to having a go at making that bag which is on my to-do list this month so um so yeah it's beautiful isn't it really really pretty really pretty so that's the first fabric that I got from the remnant house and they had lots of nice fabrics in various prices I would say again they were probably slightly cheaper than Truro but it was a very small shop quite cramped and um, there were only a couple of people in there at the time which was fine but we were sort of at the end of the day and we didn't have a lot of energy left we were a bit walked out by this point to be honest so I didn't have a really good rummage um, but I did see this fabric which just my I was drawn to as soon as I walked in immediately with my daughter in mind and I've never sewn with this fabric before so this is going to be an experience this is it here which is a beautiful fleece fabric and as soon as I saw this I knew my daughter would love it it's just beautiful it is so so snugly soft and my plan is that I'm going to make her a dressing gown as a Christmas present for her um, and when I took it to the counter because the unfortunate thing was it didn't have the price on the roll but the lady behind the counter told me it was £10 a metre so I've got three metres of this to make a dressing gown for her but she also told me it's glow in the dark so all these moons and stars apparently are glow in the dark as well which I just thought well that's just that's just gonna um that's just going to sell it to me isn't it because she'll just love it I mean as I say those of you that know my daughter's 21 but she's still a big kid at heart and this is so snugly soft it's going to be amazing as a dressing gown so yeah so that was the other fabric that I bought from the remnant house and then finally I have one two three four five fabrics to show you that I got from Fabworks in Dewsbury yesterday and I love fabric Fabworks I haven't been since before the lockdown um, obviously they were closed for an extended period and even when we were opening back up again in the UK they decided to stay shut for a little bit longer. They have completely changed around the flow of their shop from what it was prior to the lockdown to make it easier for social distancing and to just make it easy for you as a customer as well so it really really works. Um, so I had a chance, I had an hour to kill yesterday and that's all I needed. Now we are coming towards the end of finishing our kitchen renovations uh we're just waiting for the flooring to be done which is going to be next month which i'm really looking forward to and then we are starting work on our living room to redecorate it before christmas we want that done for christmas and we've ordered a new sofa which is amazing and um yeah it's going to be quite vibrant compared to what it is now is my living room with lots of colors and contrasting fabrics and textures and things so i'm really looking forward to it all coming together i can picture it and visualize it in my mind and i think it's going to look amazing so um we've ordered the sofas as i mentioned but i want to make my own cushions because i'm a dressmaker and why not why would i not want to make my own cushions i'm thinking i'm thinking about making my own curtains as well but we will We'll see we'll hold out the jury on that one so while I was in Fabworks yesterday they do obviously dressmaking fabrics but they also do curtaining and upholstery fabrics as well so I had a little nosy now I'd seen this fabric on Textile Express but unfortunately they were sold out and so when I was in Fabworks I noticed they'd got it as well so I have bought myself a meter of this and it's beautiful it is so gorgeous so this is it here it's this beautiful velvet it is so soft um obviously it's curtain weight dress um curtain weight upholstery weight fabric but it's got cheetahs or leopard i think they're cheetahs aren't they are they cheetahs or are they leopards i really don't know and tropical birds on i mean you can see the shine on that because it's so gorgeous um this was actually a little bit more expensive on in fabworks than it was on textile express but as i said they didn't have it in stock so i think it was 17 pounds a meter on textile express or it might have been 20 pounds a meter but this was 22 in fabworks but i only need a meter of this so um i bought myself a meter and the plan is that this is going to make four cushions now you're probably thinking you won't get four cushions out of a meter of this but I also bought a contrasting fabric for the back and the staff in Fabworks are so helpful because I was initially looking for like a green that would um, contrast or complement this quite well but they didn't have the right colour greens so 
the ladies were like look we'll get what we've got and we'll bring it out and you can have a look and we'll put them together and they were just so amazing so we decided on this one this mustard color so again this is just a plain velvet fabric um which is um it's got no stretch in it this is not a dressmaking weight fabric but it is sort of for curtaining upholstery and i think if i stand up hopefully you will see that they're going to contrast together really well um so this is going to be the front of the cushions and this is going to be the back so yeah i've got a meter of each and i think they're just going to look amazing so they were the first two fabrics that i chose and the rest of the fabrics are dressmaking fabrics so again i'm thinking autumn autumnal colors and yeah i've gone for the purples and the dark greens the olives that kind of color so i found this beautiful um knit fabric which i'm thinking about having a go at the sheridan sweater by hey june handmade i'll put a picture of that up here and i saw this and love it it's gorgeous so this is a beautiful maroon um knit fabric that has got um that lovely sort of melange type design to it i guess you could call it um i got two meters of this this was 10 pounds a meter so it wasn't obviously ridiculously cheap um but fab fab works do do great quality fabrics at really good price um so yeah so i've got a couple of meters of this and um the plan is i'm gonna have a go at that that um sweater i think it will work really well it's quite lightweight um but I'm hoping it will work really, really well. So that was the first one that I bought. And then next up, Fabworks do amazing woolen fabrics. And I don't just mean sort of the woolen coating fabrics, but they also do wool blend fabrics for um, suits and tailoring and nice trousers and that kind of thing. And they'd got this wool twill fabric that I was looking for a green to make some really nice winter weight trousers and i found this and it's beautiful it's a wool blend um it's a wool twill it's gorgeous beautiful color this was eight pounds a meter which is just amazing for i mean you can see the quality of that with the sheen um i am going to make the palazzo pants that i made during the summer um it is the pattern from the great british sewing bee but i adapted it to fit me i think i did a full butt adjustment and um yeah i have adapted that pattern i've killed it to within an inch of its life so that it fits me perfectly having said that i did try those trousers on yesterday morning and they were a bit big on the waist so i think i'm gonna have to um i'm gonna have to mess about with it again um but anyway i am planning to make a winter weight version of those trousers um out of this for winter because this is just beautiful so i got two and a half meters of this which will be more than enough to make those trousers but just look at that look at that quality eight pounds a meter stunning absolutely stunning so um finally this fabric was on the mannequin and um i was thinking about the gala dinner that was originally going to be um obviously in the sewing retreat that obviously now won't be going ahead but i'm thinking ahead for next year and i saw this fabric and i just fell in love it's just gorgeous it's a beautiful color it's a crepe back satin and um, they had it draped over a mannequin and they've got it in various different colors including a beautiful mustard color as well but i bought it in this beautiful wine color it's so so stunning this again was eight pounds a meter it's a beautiful weight that is the i think that's the shiny side uh, yeah that's the shiny side it is coming up very shiny on screen but it's really not that shiny in real life it's more matte um, and that's obviously the crepe side as well so I bought four meters of this because it is so so beautiful again it's coming up more red on screen I think than it is in real life it's much more of a deep um, maroony color um, but it's so so beautiful so beautiful really good quality and um yeah this is going to be a gorgeous a gorgeous dress basically a gorgeous evening dress um 
and I've got an idea in my head what I want to make but I haven't got a pattern for it so I think I'm going to have to have a go at making my own so I probably will twirl it first but what I'm wanting is a sort of when I say like a toga style I'm thinking you know sort of the um v-neck well or, pr or probably just slight crossover at the front sleeveless but with lots of gathers here at the shoulders so you get that lovely draping effect across across the uh the chest um and then probably a long well i'm saying a long circle skirt will probably be panelled i think um just so that it just falls um long that's that's the idea and nipped in at the waist so that's the sort of image i've got in my head but it's um it's a way off yet before i'm going to be getting around to that right that is it that's everything that i've got over the last few weeks to show you so i really hope you enjoyed having a look at some of those fabrics i'm really really pleased to get some of these gorgeous tonal colors in for autumn and i can't wait to get started so that's it from me today hope you've enjoyed this vlog if you have please give me a thumbs up and um, please subscribe if you haven't done already i will be back with my stitched up weekly vlog after the weekend i think and um, i will uh, be back with you really soon take care bye